<sighs> so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to calculate the maximum shear force but for us to be able to do so we need to calculate all the other shear forces when we are given a loaded beam all right so for us to get to calculate uh, the shear forces first we need to calculate the reactions and we've already done that in the video linked to this question here that we are doing so guys this was uh, july 2015 and i've already made a video where i was doing the same question but i was doing 3.1 and i calculated the reactions both the reactions reaction left and reaction right and if you have a problem on with calculating that please click on the link there um, in the corner you will get the video that is calculating the reactions of, for this question so i just brought those reactions into this question because we already calculated them right guys if you're watching videos from me for the first time please care to like share comment and subscribe once again this is bscn5 and um, i promised to release videos on centroids and all those calculations uh, moments of area once i reach 100 subscribers so if you're watching videos from me for the first time please subscribe if you've been watching and yet you haven't subscribed please subscribe and share it uh, to your friends you know in colleges and just help the nosana community grow because i don't want to just keep releasing videos and then you guys are being selfish you guys don't want to you know share and help others because i'm already putting the videos out there so that they can help everyone else that needs help right so you guys the most that you guys can do to me uh is to share and subscribe and i really appreciate uh those guys that are giving me feedback remember it was craig um from all the way from elangeni college right um shout out to you uh you know he reached out to me and explained you know that these videos are actually helping him and yeah guys that's all that you guys have to do is just uh my whatsapp link is in the in the description you know it just it just gives me that you know that uh that uh, adrenaline i'd call it uh to keep on pushing so yeah guys please whatsapp link in the description uh you know what to do uh enough with the chit chat let's cut straight to the chase so if you need an explanation on how to deal with uh calculating the shear forces when you have a beam a loaded beam like when you have a beam not when you have a force acting upwards or downwards when you have a beam guys the first video on shear forces link in the corner there i did an explanation of what happens when you are doing this right so in this video i'm just going to be uh doing the calculation right i hope you guys don't have a problem with that if you need help like if you need another explanation uh be more than welcome to do so i uh, just need to let you just have to let me know okay guys so straight to the chase in this question here uh we are required to calculate the shear forces as you can see six marks to get the shear force and then six marks to get the bending moments and guys it's uh we don't need to draw right we they say we shouldn't draw the diagrams but i will make videos when i'm drawing those i also make videos when i am doing the bending moments right so pay cl uh, close attention to the thumbnails because that's where everything is at guys i'm building an empire right so i'm building an empire here uh just subscribe don't be don't be you know don't be mean no okay so guys enough with the chit chat has already said uh what are we going to do we're going to say moments no we're not going to say moments we're just going to calculate the shear forces but we're starting on point a okay so i'm gonna say shear force on point a as you can see just draw that and now you need to go on point a and take all the see what is happening on point a you can see that you have positive force a force that is going upwards guys is a positive a force that is acting downwards is a negative force so we're going to start with the positive force okay uh let me just start with the positive force the positive force would be the the, the that reaction which would be 35 right 35 comma 7 7 kilonewtons right so you have to write 7 kilonewtons if you don't want it's fine 35 comma 7 kilonewtons and we need to subtract the 18 because it's going down so you say minus 18 kilonewtons right and then your answer you can just write it somewhere there and say it is equal to and guys our answer is going to be 17.7 kilonewtons 
right and we are going to move on now we need to account for shear force a b guys because we have a beam in between a and b so i'll say shear force a b right and what we, what is happening on point a b is that i have the beam so i'm going to take the answer from the previous question not question the previous answer i'll carry carry it on so i'll say 17 comma 7 kilonewtons but i'll need to multiply the weight of the beam right so the beam is six kilonewtons six kilonewtons but i need to multiply it with the length so it will be the length from a to b which would be 2.5 so i'll say times 2.5 right meters and guys what you will get uh from doing that you get 2.7 right you get 2.7 kilonewtons voila and now we have to move on to point b as you can see on point b we have a force that is acting downwards so i'm just going to say um uh, shear force on point b so i'll just say shear force but i'll just write b because it is on that point b so i'll take the answer from there which is 2,7 right 2,7 kilonewtons now i need to subtract that because it is going down so i'll say minus 16 kilonewtons because it's point b and guys what i get is a negative answer and it'll be negative 13 right negative 13 comma 3 kilonewtons like that okay let me just try to shift this because i think it might uh, cut it out so yeah i can't take any chances i'm gonna say minus like this okay so that is the shear force b um now the shear force now guys we have something interesting happening between b and c as you can see between b and c i'm gonna use a different color this one i'll say shear force shear force b and i mean shear force in between point b and c sorry uh what do i have i'm gonna take the minus 13 first i'll say minus 13,3 kilonewtons okay uh 13,3 kilonewtons now what is happening i need to subtract the weight that is going down okay but i have two beams as you guys can see i have two beams so i'm gonna say minus okay i'm gonna put a bracket here i'm gonna take the first beam which is the 12 kilonewtons 12 kilonewtons multiplied by the length which is 2,5 times 2,5 right and i need to subtract again the other beam the one on the bottom as you can see the one on the bottom which is the six kilonewtons so i'm going to say six kilonewtons times the 2,5 because it's the same length right and what i am getting is minus 58,3 right minus 58 comma okay that looks like a three guys minus 58 right comma three kilonewtons like that and we move on now we are going to point uh to calculate the shear force now on point c right we have to calculate the shear force on point c because we have this reaction here so i'm going to say shear force c okay and we're going to take that from the previous uh, calculation we'll say minus 58.3 kilonewtons right mind you now we need to add this because it's going upwards so we'll say plus um 108.3 kilonewtons and what we get guys um is 50 kilonewtons right we get 50 kilonewtons okay now we need to calculate the shear force between c and d right so i'm gonna change it again because i have the loads so i'm gonna say shear force right uh, i'm gonna say the shear force between c and d shear force between c d i'll just say take that 50 from the previous question now it's question from the pre previous uh calculation so i'll say 50 kilonewtons right now i need to subtract the two uh loads that are going downwards so the first one would be uh 12 kilonewtons it's not two, 12 uh 12 but i need to multiply with the length so times two minus the other one which was the six the bottom one six times 12 right six times 12 six times two sorry six times two and 
that is all and guys what will be the answer the answer will be 14 kilonewtons right 14 not kilonewtons the answer is going to be 14 kilonewtons so you say 14 sorry about this okay 14 uh so it's helpful if you guys also do these calculations and if you spot a mistake you can just let me know in the comments 14 kilonewtons right and now we are going to do the shear force on point d so we'll just say shear force point d okay uh there's no point need for me to use this color i'm gonna use this one because it's a normal one so shear force on point d what i do guys i take that same shear force there uh, from the previous calculation i say 14 kilonewtons right and take the shear force on d that is acting downwards which was that which is the 14 i'll say minus 14 okay sorry minus 14 kilo newtons guys and what i will get is zero kilo newtons right guys but what we need we need to get the maximum shear force so the maximum shear force guys in this question here will now be uh this minus 58 because it is the highest even though it's negative it will be the maximum right it will be the maximum and that is how it's done so guys don't forget to subscribe and help us reach a hundred subscribers uh so that is so that those videos can come out on the um centroids and uh second moment of inertia or area right so thank you guys for watching don't forget to share comment like and subscribe until we meet again in the next video cheers